Hi folks, Dave with AirSpool here, and yes, the rumor is true. It really is now possible to run an air conditioner directly off of solar panels. And today we're gonna to talk about the two most common types for home use, the 310 volt hybrid unit and the 48 volt battery unit. So these two systems start out pretty similarly. They're both mini splits. A mini split is a system where the inside unit mounts directly on your wall. There's no ductwork. Instead, the inside unit connects to the outside unit with refrigerant lines, a control line, and the inside unit gets its power from the outside unit. So in the summertime, cold air comes out of this inside unit and the heat is expelled through the outside unit. In the wintertime, there's a reversing valve. These are heat pumps. so. The heat will come out of the inside unit in the winter and cold comes out of the outside unit in the winter. And these units for solar powered ones, as of now, they're all that I know of 9,000 to 24,000 BTU. So that's 0.75 to two tons of air conditioning. Probably not enough to run your old house, but enough if you put one of these into a hot spot, upstairs office, bedroom, Anywhere where you want air, free air conditioning, barn, garage, doghouse, your dog will be happy. Um, these will run free off of solar all day long. If you put one of these in a hot spot, bedroom or whatever, where you spend a lot of time, by so doing, you're not only getting free air conditioning in that space, but probably your main unit, you can set the hike up that set point temperature by a couple degrees. So that unit's not gonna run as hard because it's not having to cool as much space. And so you're saving there. And of course, you're also saving on the other unit that's running off of solar. These units both have DC motors. Why is that important? Because solar, these solar panels create DC power. And so in the past, you would have to take this DC power and invert it to be able to run the alternating current motors of a traditional air conditioner. But these two babies both have DC compressor, condenser fan motor, and indoor unit blower motors. So they're set up for solar and there's not that conversion loss. And the magic for both these units, both have what's called variable refrigerant flow or VRF. And in the past, old style air conditioner, it's either on or off. Every time it turns on, you can kind of you feel or hear it come on, mm, it buzzes on. That needs a, a ton of power when it first comes on. That's four to six times the running uh, current for it, running power for it. But even though that lasts maybe a few milliseconds, you need to accommodate that inrush current, inrush power, and you accommodate it with solar by having four to six times more solar panels, and you also need four to six times more batteries. So why weren't there solar powered air conditioners in the past? That's pretty much the reason there was no VRF technology. Finally, these are both, both can run just fine, totally off grid. You'll see this plug here, that plug, you don't need to have it plugged in at all during the day. You can cut the cut the plug or do whatever you want during the day if you only want to run off of solar. We'll get to the use of the plug here momentarily. How these are different? Well, the beauty of the hybrid unit is these panels here, they plug directly in to the outside unit with MC4 connectors. So the outside unit has MC4 connectors. The solar panels all have MC4 connectors, so it's plug and play. The battery operated one, really what you're doing is you're charging this battery through the MPPT. And so you're supplying 48 volts to the unit. And that's really makes that unit simpler because the, the batteries, the battery's 48, but so are the motors inside. So the uh, compressor, the condenser fan, and the blower motor are all 48. So it's really like this is one big note, 48 
volt loop here. So in that way, it's much simpler than the hybrid unit. The hybrid unit, simple to set up. Inside, there's some complex electronics that takes this uh, 80 to 380 volt of solar panel power and steps it up to be 310 volt power bus to run the uh, blower motor, uh, compressor, and the condenser fan. So a um, little bit more complexity in, uh, of the electronics and the hybrid one. What about these units in terms of running when it's not sunny? There is nighttime in this world. And even though we don't like there to be, uh, be able to run our units off of solar all the time. Well, the 48 volt one, you can imagine that even if you're in a place like Palm Springs, that's pretty darn sunny. There's only eight hours or something of peak sun even in the summer. And that means there's 16 hours when you're probably needing to run again off a of battery. So that means you're gonna have to have three times as much batteries if you wanna be able to run all night long. That's probably more, not quite true in Palm Springs or Las Vegas where we have a desert climate and it cools off a bit at night. But if you're in a place like Florida or Michigan or North Carolina in the summer, there's a lot of humidity it means that you pretty much keep your unit going all the time and you need to have that you need to have the battery in order to keep this unit going all the time. And so you're gonna need to have a lot of batteries to be able to accommodate that. And running when there's partial sun, that's where the beauty of this hybrid really shows its force and that the, the solar is always prioritized. So let's say that the unit needs 850 watts in the summer to run and there's only 400 watts of solar. Well. The grid power will fill in for the extra 450 watts, but whatever amount of solar there is, that will always be prioritized and the grid will only fill in. So that's, again, there's some pretty nice electronics in there that blend the grid power to combine with the solar panel power. And the grid power needs to be ramped up from either, if you, the, these units, some run on 120 volt, alternating current grid power. Some still need a breaker, so 240 volt. But at any rate, they're, they're um, rectified and, and ramped up to be 310 volt and they're, and they're blended in with the solar power to run the whole unit at 310 volt. So pretty slick, the hybrid unit's pretty slick in that way. The 48 volt units really historically and history going back say 15, 20 years, if you had a communications tower, communications shed somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, and you had electronics in there that needed to stay cool, this, the 48 volt was a, your hero because it was the only way to do it. So it didn't matter how many batteries or how many panels it took, you needed to keep things cool and it did the job. But these days, Bottom line, it's pretty dubious running the 48 volt constantly without, with a minimum amount of battery and solar panels. You can imagine if it rains three days in a row, you, you have an issue, but the hybrid one, no problem running constantly because the grid power is always there as your backup. And that grid power, by the way, it's, it the unit is going to be running at 20 plus here. So even though it's running off of grid power, it's super efficient. And so if you happen to have already have an off grid house, if you plug this into your current inverter system, most of the power probably, hopefully comes for air conditionings during the day off of your three or four solar panels that plug directly into the hybrid unit. And then you can soak up the, the, the uh, any inverted power to the unit at nighttime. So it works well for off-grid as well. So in summary, really the hybrid units these days, way to go. The maintenance is a lot lower because you don't have to worry about maintaining batteries. The upfront costs, you don't have to buy the batteries. Upfront cost is also lower because these units are in a way off the shelf and that these are very, very similar to existing high efficiency VRF 
many split units already out there. The 48 volt unit, because it's a little bit more specialized, the, the motors are 48 volt. So that means that if a motor happens to go out, you need to replace with another 48 volt motor, which is a little bit expensive. And of course, yes, the, the maintenance of the batteries is also gets to be over time a little bit insurmountable. So we're obviously advocates for the hybrid unit. We're Airspool. Check out airspool.com. If you like this video, subscribe to the Airspool channel. Put any comments, questions in the comment section. Any other questions you have, get in touch. Appreciate your time. Thanks a lot.